everybody, it's 5.02 uh, and we have quorum, so I'm going to go ahead and call the uh, January meeting of the River Front Improvement Commission to order. Um, first off, I want to welcome new uh, Commissioner Andrea Olson. Uh, Andrea, welcome. Do we want to <laughs> kind of go around and introduce ourselves or kind of give a little sure. or how do we? <laughs> yeah, let's do know. it. What's, what's the protocol? Let's do it. Um, I know the last time I did something similar to this, Courtney made everyone share a fun fact oh. if you wanted to do that. Otherwise, we could just do name and how long you've been in Davenport. Okay, okay that's sure. I'll kick yeah. it off. Uh, my name is Gwendolyn Lee, and I grew up here, moved away for ten years, came back, and have been terrorizing the Quad Cities ever since. And uh, I'm so currently I've moved here in the last. 15 years, so. and I was Alderman Condon's at large representative, and hopefully they don't kick me out now that we have Michelle Lynch. So she's stuck with us. Yeah, yeah, well. Well, yeah. Well, for now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm Victoria Kenniger, and I moved to the Quad Cities in 2008 to go to St. Ambrose, and never left. So I've been here since then, and I will share a fun fact just because I have a good one. I've never mowed a lawn. <laughs> As well, you shouldn't. <laughs> um, and then we've obviously spent some good time together. Uh, I'm Stephanie Bly. Um, I also moved here to go to St. Ambrose and never left, um, but a couple of years earlier than that, 2005. So, yeah, I have mowed along though. <laughs> Do you want me to go? Yeah, you, like you go. Um, uh, my name's Andrea Olson. Uh, I was born in Tucson, but I moved here shortly thereafter. Uh, I was here up until around college, had a 10-year hiatus out of town, uh, moved back in around 08. Um, fun fact, um, I, my father has an old car that it, I took 10 years to restore. Um, it finally got done in 2021 and won an award at a big show. Yeah, Very nice. cool. That's cool. We'll look for you cruising, cruising the one ways until they get. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do a lot of, it seems. Right. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not on purpose either. <laughs> I'm Mary Press. I, uh, I'm new to this um, commission as well. I've only been here for about three meetings. Okay. So, um, and I'm. Uh, Live in Davenport. I've been, I don't see, probably about ten years. But I grew up on a farm not far from here. Sure. And I actually lived in Tucson for a while too. So oh, wonderful! That area. So. Fun fact. Fun fact. I'm retired from a uh, general manager position at WQPT. Okay. Wonderful. I'm um, Julie Tun. I've lived in Davenport since 1995. What's your fun? Do you have a fun fact? Have you mowed lawns? I have chickens. How sad. Hey! <laughs> I have chickens. <laughs> You're starting to lay down. So. I was just going to ask that. Yeah. Did you just start your chickens? Um, uh, Angela Stone. Um, I'm a newbie here. I've only been here for a few years now. And fun fact. Um, I, I don't know. I have some hobbies that are interesting, kind of unique. I like to fly airplanes. Hike. You fly real airplanes? Uh -huh. <laughs> You're a pilot? Yeah. Well, I'm working on some more certifications just for fun. But yeah, that's a fun hobby. It's, it's nice because you're alone. <laughs> 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 I have kids, you know? <laughs> it went, as soon as I went up and I was like, wow, this is like a little box. You fly out of Davenport or in um, I had an airplane out in Davenport for a long time there, and now it's in Oklahoma getting repairs. Then it's annual. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the most expensive part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it is expensive, but if you have partners that are responsible, it's really affordable. So that's really the way to go. Mm -hmm. sure. Just yeah. to share. Absolutely, yeah. I don't, or just rent it out. You lease it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super. It makes money for you. <laughs> that, that was my excuse. I had to think of it. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Um, I'm Dee Brummer. Um, 
let's see, I've been here 40 years, so came from Chicago. Um, a fun fact, um, uh, I hook rugs. Do what? <laughs> what? What'd she say? I hook rugs. Yeah, you hook rugs. Oh, oh, this is very trendy. Look at you. Really? Do you like sell your hook rugs? Um, no, I don't sell my hook rugs. Okay. I make them as gifts. They're Wool is quite expensive, so like, yeah, I like wool and time, yeah. yeah. I like rugs. So that they can <laughs> make with love. I, I, I like that's that. pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, you can never charge enough to make those. Yeah, that's you know. what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Chris Meyer. I'm not actually on this commission. I'm the liaison from the Parks Advisory Board. That's the fun fact. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been here 41 years beating D, which is my whole life, <laughs> aside from college. Oh, I might have been here longer. Oh. So I rounded down. <laughs> my name is Scott Pettis. I've also been here 40 years. I was transferred here with the military. I was active duty Coast Guard. Met my wife here. Decided I wanted to raise my family here. It's been a great, uh, great community to raise a family. And. Uh, Fun fact, I guess I'm a diehard Brewer fan, Packer fan. Mm. Uh, Saturday was sad, so you were yeah, sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a sad weekend, but mm -hmm. there's always next year. Mm -hmm. I'm Bill Churchill. <laughs> I've been here since in the Quad Cities for, since 1971, however many years that is. I, got, I came here because I was a teacher who got a teaching job. So that's why I came here. I've been on the commission for, I don't know, six or seven years. And uh, my fun fact is, it's in the 30s finally, and we're able to get outside. <laughs> yeah. And that's a fun fact for me. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, we have the minutes in the packet. If everyone's had a chance to review, uh, review. A uh, motion to approve November's meeting since we uh, had a break last month for December. The motion to approve the November minutes. So moved. Uh, motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. Do I have any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of approving the November minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Excellent. We'll go ahead and move on to old business. Do we have old business? We do not. Um, and not that we're really voting on anything else today, but I thought I would share really quick. Um, so Andrea is here gracing us with her presence. She cannot vote tonight okay. because council is instating her tomorrow. Um, so, but I invited her to come. And so you're a rogue agent. Hang out. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe you're the public with business. Yeah. <laughs> Spice it up. Still trying to back out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no okay. old business. Okay. Um, so then on a new business and the open commission seat. I think we had a fifth ward opening. We do. Um, Roma resigned in December. Um, and so we have a commission position open representing the fifth ward. Um, our commissioner does not have to reside in the fifth ward. They would just be representing. Um, if we don't have any recommendations come forward, uh, we would then move to asking Alderman Kelly if he has any recommendations. Um, he is aware that Roma has resigned, um, but we kind of wanted to see internally if anybody had any ideas, thoughts, people we should reach out to. Are there other requirements um, to, to the individual? Do they have to live in a certain city? Uh, they have to live in Davenport, mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, I don't believe so. We're not uh, gender balanced. No, we are not gender balanced. Um, and the law is still gender balanced. I mean, it's so nice to see us in, with this many women, but um, we should have been with that, I think. Yeah, I think that was a good point. Well, well you know, in the skill sets, it'd be nice to have somebody that had real estate skills or business skills in that regard, renovation skills. Or knowledge, I, at least, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Knowledge there. Right? Knowledge of. Yeah. And obviously an interest in the riverfront. That's a nice priority. I don't know if uh, when Andrew, when you were 
had appointed if other people came to the alderman. That was interesting, only that he filled out any forms there. Mm -hmm. I think Andrea was the only one we had on file um, okay. when we reached out to her. That doesn't mean that we haven't received anything in the meantime. Um, my guess would be not, since it's only been about a month-ish. Um, but I can certainly check again and see if there have been anything filed. Well, I think when I came on how, six, seven years ago, it was mostly men. So it's kind of interesting how it... We yeah, 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 yeah. What's yeah. that? Yeah, flip -flop. yeah, I mean, there was controversy about it being too many. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that was heard and, yeah. <laughs> what is the deadline for submitting uh, potential? Um, it is open. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Open and self filled. Right, so everybody, sorry, a lot of Kyle Grip posted on his uh, Alderman Facebook page mm -hmm. various openings on the different commissions. It seemed like he got a lot of interest, so I don't know okay. if he may have some ideas. That, as well. Yeah, that might be a good follow-up. No, he's our liaison anyway, so yeah. he's usually at our meetings, mm -hmm. just so you know. But he's not here tonight. Obviously. And then I guess I've been talking to <laughs> at my son's bowling uh, Saturdays, a uh, former city staff retired guy, Greg Alvin Soder, from years ago. I don't know how interested he is in joining. He was talking about coming today just to observe the meeting, but okay. he obviously didn't make it. So I don't know. I don't know his exact interest, whether he actually would want to join the commission. He's an interesting person in that um, he did a number of the Riverfront projects over the last 20 or 30 years. Okay. Yeah, he's I mean, been telling he was, me stories. <laughs> Get a he lot was of. the landscape architect for the Parks Department for 35 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, capital guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely been telling me stories, and uh, I think a lot of his skills probably overlap with Dee in some ways, but um, yeah, he talked about the very first part of the riverfront bike path. They just dumped some blacktop down there and called it a bike path. <laughs> Council was embarrassed by how small it was, so they basically got them to extend it to be more of a. I don't know if that's relatively true, but. Yeah. Yeah. He's got some. He's got a lot of institutional knowledge, but I don't. Like I said, I don't know if he's actually interested in joining or just wants to get more involved. It, it'd be nice. I mean, I don't know real estate people. It would be nice if we could find someone that has kind of a background in rentals and leases and. Um, so we could kind of pair ourselves up with the market and have somebody with some insight there. Okay. Any other thoughts? There's currently one seat available. One seat available. Yes. Yeah. There, are there opportunities for other participants in different capacities, such as a board advisor or a board liaison or something that would be uh, maybe specialty knowledge that we could tap as needed? I can certainly look into that. I'm actually not sure. But yeah, I can definitely look into that. All right, thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, up next, let's go to revisiting commission goals. So we included, if you turn to, I believe it is the fourth page in your packet, um, these were some goals and ideas that were put together, I believe, early last year. Uh, these were also presented, I believe it was at the July meeting that we had with City Council over here, um, where we just kind of talked through the role of the commission, kind of where uh, the commission saw itself, things that we were hoping to accomplish moving forward. And so Courtney and I just wanted to bring these kind of back around to start off the year to see um, you know, do we feel that these items are still a good fit for what the commission is trying to accomplish? Are we looking to add anything? Is there anything we feel like we need to maybe tweak or amend a little bit? Um, certainly that doesn't have to be finalized tonight. Um, you can take this home, digest it, a little light reading before bed. Um, but if anybody does have any suggestions or any talking points that you'd like to go over tonight. You're more than welcome. These don't have to be voted on or adopted necessarily, do they? No, not necessarily. These are just a topic discussion. Yep. Yep. Um, on number three, um, one that deals with the farmer market, um, I think that we're not, I, I don't know if the 
commissions advocating for and on behalf of the farmer's market. I think we're more um, partnering with the farmer's market uh, related to activities and needs. Well, I mean, so they're pretty heavily subsidized. I would call it more of a partnership than an advocacy kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure if we want to be that heavily subsidizing them, but well, we have to figure that out going forward. But I, I do think we are a partner. Um, in the past, we've been a partner in grants for some of the activities, you know, that we've been able to do. Um, that Stephanie will be uh, having to deal with these days going forward. But that, you know, that that's one of our bigger, the biggest partnerships. You know. Well, and I'm happy to see the evolution of the activating the riverfront these past few years, and obviously Stephanie coming on staff, and uh, really as it being one of the region's biggest assets, you know, from then, and how much that will continue to evolve with the Destination Iowa Grant and everything that's happening along there. So I think that is crucial, and I'm, I'm really happy to have added that, you know, these last couple of years. A question. Do we, uh, River Heritage Park, is yes. that? I know there's been talk about that's being modified, but I don't think that's uh, there's no funding in place for that. Uh, it is actually being modified right now. Is it? Um, to some extent, yes. So if you've driven by within, I think, probably the last week, um, there's some construction equipment over there. They are, um, for lack of better terminology, basically like ripping apart the park as we know it so that they can work on the sewer system underneath. Um, it's supposed to help with flood mitigation. Oh, yeah. um, so the that, grassy area. Yes, yeah, that grassy area tends to take on a lot of water um, when it's unseasonably wet. So um, that project is beginning now. Um, I'm not sure with the weather, the way that it's been, how slowly that will move. Um, I've been told that they their hope is to have everything completely wrapped up prior to cruise season. Um, obviously, that will throw a little kink in things if they're not done. Um, but the nice thing is our cruise season starts a little bit later this year. Um, I believe our first one um, is either the end of June or early July. So um, that also builds in a little bit of a cushion. Um, but that's all related to the flood mitigation plan. Yes. Not really related to the revising the parking lot or Correct. turnaround no. area or anything Correct. like this. So, we didn't prioritize that very high. We did. Well, there were so many other CIP needs and kind of life safety issues and that deferred maintenance with some of the infrastructure. So I think that that kind of got booted down the priority list a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. And well, I think Courtney said it, you know, the whole parking lot rearrangement, I'm not sure if it's really necessary or not. And then, uh, of course, the, the bridge project, that's kind of gone the back burner to the first replica of the first bridge over the Mississippi, which would be over River Drive, which River Action is working on at fun, fundraising. And I don't think that's on their front burner right now either. But I'm just curious just to see if there's any anything going on or if you've heard anything about actual modifications of the park, and so I guess not beyond just the flood mitigation I haven't I think from what I've heard on that their hope is to get that piece accomplished first before and how you know, is the flood mitigation me. plan I know that's a very extensive program and plan and involves a lot of issues and most of it up to this point has been underground and this continues right. that vein how, how far along do you have any idea um I'll admit I'm probably not the most knowledgeable. I actually came on like right as the floodwaters were receding last year. Um, and so this will this will be my first official flood season. So um, I'll probably be much more knowledgeable in the next couple of months, but I'm happy to look into that and we can certainly report back in well, one of our emails. They haven't, the staff hasn't submitted the CIP to council yet. I think, I believe it happens in February. Yeah, really yeah. soon. So yeah. when that officially comes up, we will know where all these projects yeah are. I thought that was pretty well set as to what their plan going forward well, they have those they have an, they have the projects in a listing but it's funding for the projects so how many years out those will be yeah. and the budget meetings begin I believe next week yeah, probably on the next week 
I know it included, and we've been privy to this information along uh, over the years. Uh, there's there's underground as they're doing now, but there's also some berms. There's some, even some walls. There's a there's a very complex plan in going forward. And everybody always talks about where's your flood wall? Well, there's they're working on the flood mitigation plan right now, and it's being worked on. Well, literally as we speak. Well, yeah, and that plan was a four-year plan or five-year. There were it was oh, more than that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A million so, dollars. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a I will be. I don't want to say this. I'll be. I may be dead before. Yeah, it's, a, it's like ten years. Ever thought about? Mm -hmm. There's so many parts of it. Yeah. I mean, like you know, fixing Third um, and Fourth Street and Ripley Street and changing all those stores, which you got to do all of that. Of the village also yeah. yeah so there's a lot of underground that probably yep. will be a decade yeah in okay. the making i think the plan is a 10-year plan good discussion guys thank you um i think the rest of it looks pretty good yeah i've i've mm -hmm. been i've been amazed at how much sewer or, and kind of storm work has been mm -hmm. has been coming along on that but yeah i'm i'm happy with the goals I mean, there's no mention on here of the cruise ships at all, I don't think. I mean, I guess I'm probably pretty happy with what's been going on there. As far as a goal, I don't see it unless I miss something. I don't know if there is a goal for it. kind of a program. Yeah, I suppose it's unless the goal is more stops or more boats. Actually, we have fewer, don't we, this year? This year we do have fewer. Is that because the cruise lines are just not, I don't know, as many ships going up and down, is it? I'm not 100% sure. I know, um, like, they book fairly far out. Um, so I don't know if now we're getting into the people that were starting to book post-COVID and if maybe that had an effect on people, you know, choosing to take yeah. a different means of travel. Um, I'm actually not quite sure. Um, could you explain a little bit on under number three, bullet three, create an economic environment? through leasing, yada, yada. How do you define an economic, what is an economic environment? Or how do we define that? Do you want to talk to that, speak to that one a little bit, Dee? <laughs> Dee's kind of been leaving the charge on that talk one. talked with the uh, uh, council, um, our buildings need a lot of capital improvement mm -hmm. to make them um, viable. Um, and we also uh, need to think about that uh, those buildings are to be able to have a business be profitable and that um, we should think about when we lease spaces, it should be businesses that can make a good living there and enhance uh, the riverfront. So it's really that um, economic environment. We need to up our game and be able to uh, t a landlord that has a better tenant space and building to be able to allow them to uh, flourish in their business. And also, tr and then also making sure we're approving tenants that activate that space, or, right. or that there is some kind of synergy that happens. You mm -hmm. know, so you know, and we and the farmers market is wonderful, and so it's an amazing community asset. But it is only on the weekends, or sometimes one, you know, on one day during the week. Um, so in terms of like looking at future tenants, people that will both you know activate and attract to kind of create um, kind of like more of a holistic ecosystem well, amongst yeah. 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 Well, first of all, you you may or may not know we do manage the leases of all the properties on the riverfront. That's one of our big things. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on the commission goals? Otherwise, we can go ahead and, you know, if everyone kind of wants to take, take some time to review, kind of ponder, and then if we have something that else we want to kind of address or add to yep. or expand on, you know, we can uh, drop you and Courtney a note Absolutely. and uh, go from there. Yep. And we can certainly revisit this again in February if we want to. There's not really a timeline on this, just kind of yeah. rolling Refresh. as we go. Yeah, cool. absolutely. All right, up next we have future business with the approval of the Antonellas. Please. Yeah, so we have attached uh, drafts of the Antonella's and the Farmer's Market leases. They're both in here. Um, these will be approved at our February meeting um, to give you some time to kind of look through things. Um, we have, uh, speaking to the Antonella's lease first, 
Um, it is a three-year lease, um, and we're looking at a 5% rent increase um, for those three years, so it would stay static for those three years. Um, that is pretty consistent with the leases that have been renewed, I would say, in the last year or so. Um, that brings them up. I would need to look at the exact number, but I want to say it's around nine and a half dollars per square feet. Gwendolyn and Dee, does that sound about right? It was nine. So. Yeah, it sounds like far up. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so that will bring them a little bit more in line with uh, the businesses in the freight house that are paying a little bit more, like Front Street. So um, they are, seem excited about the three-year option. So um, Courtney and I will certainly be meeting with them to just kind of talk through, make sure that they're good with everything that's in here. Um, we This has already gone through legal. Um, as we've been kind of renewing some of these leases, we've been trying to really standardize. Um, that process is continuing um, as we're going through and thinking of you know new things that we should make sure that we kind of capitalize on. Um, but uh, between this lease then and the farmer's market lease, you'll see a lot of a lot of that similar language as we're looking to kind of standardize. Um, and then Gwendolyn, if you're okay if I move on to the farmer's market lease. Um, I just want to clarify with yeah. the Antonellas, uh, we talked about maybe implementing a mechanism to, on a monthly basis, uh, get their part of the property tax. Um, does, is that part of this? Because that brings their effective price per square foot up significantly, so is, is that addressed here? That is, that's actually a really great question. It is not in the current draft. Uh, Courtney and I have been working pretty closely with Revenue um, to figure out a way to essentially take the various bills that the tenants get throughout the year, so property tax, their rental bills each month, um, and basically roll that into one. Um, and so we don't have a solution for that yet in talking with revenue. Um, there's a lot of boxes to check um, and a lot of things to kind of work through, uh, but that is something that we are actively working on. Um, I don't know that that will be done by the time this lease is signed, but we will certainly keep you abreast of how that procedure and process is going um, as we continue to move forward on that. When I read through it, <clears throat> they're responsible for the property tax, but it you it seems outside the lease you could figure out how they're going to pay for that responsibility. Right. Without yes. having to come back and visit it. So I, that might be the answer. Is when you, okay. you know you send out the monthly rent bill. Um, then there's the utilities as a line, property tax as a line, you know, divided by twelve. Right. And then the total. Maybe that might be a way to. Okay. Perfect. And then instead of getting it into the square feet, maybe we could figure that out down the road. Yeah. And to clarify, when does their lease expire? So their current lease expires on uh, February 29th. Okay. So this would take effect March 1. Okay. Anything else with Antonella? Uh, let's move on to the Thomas Market. Okay. Uh, so the farmer's market lease, again, a lot of the language is similar. Um, this lease was a little bit trickier in that the previous lease did not match the format of any of our other leases. Um, they have some farmer's market specific clauses in there. Um, and so you'll kind of find those sprinkled throughout. Um, a couple things that I do want to note. Um, currently, they are not running on Wednesdays. However, when I spoke with them about renewal, that is something that they are revisiting this spring if they would like to move back to um, being open on Wednesday evenings. Um, I think there's been a lot of support um, from both vendors and the community about them being open again on Wednesday nights. Um, so while they've not made an official decision on that yet, um, they did ask that that be included in the language of the lease to give them the freedom to do so. Um, and that's under the term it lays out specifically when the farmer's market operates. Um, for them, we are doing a one-year lease renewal. Um, as I believe most of you know, they have expressed interest in the space that Miracle at the Freight House just vacated. Um, and while we're not looking to give them an answer, you know, in the next month or two, um, having them just sign a year-long lease will give us the time um, to decipher if if they are the right fit for that space or what that could potentially look like uh, or what um, 
improvements or upgrades they might need in the years moving forward as they continue to expand. Um, and so rather than locking them in for three years and then going in to do an amendment, you know, maybe a year from now, um, it just kind of made sense across the board to just do the one year lease renewal and then renegotiate at that time. Um, but theirs does also include that 5% rent rate increase. Um, and then they obviously do not pay property taxes since they are a nonprofit. Um, they did up to this point have a set amount that was tacked in for their utilities. Um, we're not quite sure where that number came from or how it came to be. Um, so that is something that we are reassessing to get kind of an even, everybody to have their even split of utilities moving forward, so. And it sounds like maybe they were being undercharged. Yes. Previously. Yes. Mm -hmm. So have they given you an idea if they wanted to rent that space, what they would do with it? So they are actually, uh, Courtney and I are meeting with Missy, I believe tomorrow. Um, we have asked her essentially to come up with like a very fleshed out business plan of, you know, if, if you were to rent this space, what does that look like? What are your hours of operation? What are you offering? Um, you know, we have let her know that uh, it's been expressed that food down there um, and food that is accessible throughout the week uh, is something that has been mentioned a lot. I know that's something the commission has mentioned at times. Um, you know, even me being down there for events, that's something that people mention a lot. Like, where can I eat that's right here? Um, you know, and if if it's not within the diner's hours, you've got Antonella's and sometimes that's, that's all. So, um, and I know a lot of you have experienced Antonella's can only keep up, you know, to a point where you're having to wait quite a while. So um, we have let Missy know, you know, that's obviously something that people are very, very interested in. And so um, we just kind of told her we'd like her to really just anything that as detailed as she can give us um, so that we can then bring that to you um, and then, you know, have further discussions on whether or not that might be the right fit or what it would take for something like that to be the right fit. Yep. Other questions? I think if not, we'll go ahead and move on to management update. Great. Um, so with either of the leases, if you, as you're perusing, if you do notice anything or have questions, please let us know um, so we can get in there and make sure everything kind of gets sorted out or reworded. Um, you can send those updates to either Courtney or myself. It does not matter. Um, as far as a management update, um, things are pretty much just status quo uh, with snow and trying to, you know, dig people out from said snow. Um, all of our tenants have heat right now, which is wonderful. Um, everybody seems to be happy with their snow removal so far, which is great. Uh, Parks was going around earlier this week replenishing salt. So um, I think on that front, everybody seems to be pretty happy. Um, Courtney wanted me to mention you, D. She did get your request about CIP info, and she will get back to you on that. Um, and then over the next several weeks, we should be getting a lot of updates as far as timelines um, for most of the projects that are going to be completed at the freight house this year. Um, so we've got the roof and gutter project. We've got the parapet wall. Um, we've got you know things of that nature. And so we should have a lot more information in the coming weeks. And so um, those bi-weekly updates I'm sending out will probably be a little bit beefier than they've been lately, just because we'll have a lot of things to report on. Um, and then, you know, what we need to do to prepare the tenants, what, um, you know, we need to ask of the tenants during that time, just so they are aware. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And of course, if you have questions, um, let us know. And then I did want to do a little plug for the farmer's market. Um, they actually just had three windows installed on the River Drive side um, on the main level so that you can see in from the street, which I think is going to be a huge asset for them um, because now you know that there's people in there and you can see. And so um, I think that will hopefully drive traffic a little bit. Um, I know they're super excited. I've had people comment to me on it already, but they're just like, "That's when did that happen?" Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. yeah, I didn't realize it was that. So it was, it was like heartening to see like uninitiated, 
you know, just be like, oh, like what happened over there at the Frey House? That's cool. So, you know. Yeah, it looks really nice. It's just so bright in there now. Before I felt it's such a narrow space that yeah. it just kind of opened it up. So it was really nice. Wonderful. Fantastic. And then um, I don't know if the ice is still down there, but it was as of like a day or two ago for Ice Stranding So um, Check it out quick. Yeah, check it out quick. Um, <laughs> Angela sent some really great pictures to me, like I think the morning that they ended up canceling. And oh, they, it, was, it looks cool. It was yeah. so cold. <laughs> it was so cold. I took my youngins down there to see like it actually being done. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. So what happened with Florian King? Florian King. Did that get kind of like sidelined in terms of like other priorities in terms of snow removal because it was it was quite gnarly there but I don't know if you had feedback from tenants about that. We actually yeah. yes we uh I got looped into that today yeah. so it sounds like that was something that Steve had taken care of in the past um I don't know who specifically took care of it oh. um that was not on our radar okay. but um I reached out to our snow removal contact today um, and sent them a map and just asked if they've got the capacity to include that then moving forward sure, sure. Um, anytime that uh, they're taking care of the farmer's market and then uh, the freight house area and Union Station so because we hire privately for those areas so yeah it was, it was gnarly out there yeah and that, that was what I heard <laughs> sorry I've been waiting they Dispatch is a little slow to try and let you in if you don't make it by 5.30, so. Sorry. Well, we're at our start time of 5. Oh, we have 5? Yeah. Because yeah. oh, yeah. oh, I had 5.30 on my thing, so I'm sorry. I'm totally. And there's an agenda down there. For okay. I'll let you take it home. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> wow, you probably all done. Yeah. All right, so we're going to call the main order. Let's <laughs> start all over. Um. And Stephanie, did you have anything else? No, I think that is it. Does anybody have any specific questions for either Courtney or I? Okay. I do. I well, thank you for those weekly updates. You know, those are yeah, really you're welcome. Yes. You're those welcome. Really um, they will probably be bi-weekly for a while, That's just fine. with things being a little bit slower. Um, just because I didn't, we didn't want to send out emails each week that are like yeah. nothing new. So um, obviously, once things ramp up, once our event season starts back up, those will probably be a little bit more frequent. But. Yeah. We voted on everything and we said yes to everything. That's what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Which is really only approval of the minutes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> shoveling Flory <laughs> King. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're the new snow vendor. There you go. There you go. Um, all right, so up next, the Park Liaison Report. Yes, uh, we actually had a public with comment which had some complaints about the dog park down in Centennial Park, uh, apparently with the big snow. Not everything got taken care of the way it should have been. So hopefully Chad and Parks are gonna follow up with them. They're gonna follow up with us at our next meeting. Um, Cause there are some fixes coming from their standards they set last year for the dog parks. Um, and then the main thing we talked about at our meeting was the park development program, which is kind of a discretionary program where the parks department gets like $350,000 of general fund each year and then a combination of parks advisory board and the city council basically score these projects and then the top ones get funded for the year and they're all smaller projects that don't aren't quite big enough for the CIP but are too big for a regular operational budget. Um, the ones, a lot of them were golf this year just because of how it kind of worked out but a lot of the ones that related to the riverfront would have been uh, a flex area for the dog park that would be on the other side of Marquette. So if the dog park is muddy or needs to be refreshed or whatever, they can kind of temporarily shift it over to the other side. Um, uh, well, wait, wait a minute now. Why, why would you do that? Why? Because... I mean, that's common at all the dog parks. Is yeah. Usually there'll be an area where you can, like, close it off so the grass can grow back and, yeah. like... And so they, they don't put really straw down usually up the one on Marquette there, right? So that's close to where I live. They usually put straw down when it gets muddy. Yeah, so I don't know if specifically it, muddy, but just if they need to let it re regrow the grass, I think is the main thing. I know the Bettendorf Devils Glen one has multiple areas and they can shut one off so it can regrow and then shift it around. So I think that's the goal. I don't currently have a dog, so I haven't, haven't used that one in many years, but um, I think that's just to give them more flexibility. 
um, so people can still have a dog park. I know when they were doing some bigger renovations over there, they had kind of created a temporary one along Viderback, I think, near the spray ground. Mm -hmm. So I think that worked out well, so they want to have a, a flex option. Um, another one's a $50,000 renovation to the bathroom at Credit Island um, that's not part of the lodge. Um, some minor improvements to uh, River's Edge also. And is that just recommended or is that actually approved? It's a list. We have a list of uh, to do. Well, it's it's a it's a rating system. Basically, we have this list, which adds up to three hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and the city council and the parks advisory board choose our favorites, which will be all but two or three, honestly, and they'll all get funded for next fiscal year. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's nice to not have to eliminate so many. A lot of times they'll come to us with. Five hundred thousand dollars, and we can only fund three hundred fifty thousand. So it's a lot of harder choices. Um, and it's also in keeping with River's Edge, the new ice, the second sheet of ice is open, and uh, it's been they've been able to expand a lot of options for open skating and learn to skate and figure skating and hockey. It so just that is up and rolling. Yep, now. it's going and it seems oh, to be popular. Um, and then we talked a little bit about at the end the Annie Whitmire project and uh, yeah it seems very in in flex still and certainly not really the river certainly uh, it, it, we, we also didn't have a December meeting in Parks Advisory Board and it seemed like a lot of stuff happened when we were off for a month and so there were some questions back and forth about plans on that and it seems very much kind of in limbo still but Chad and Parks seems really committed to hopefully finding a place, a permanent place for junior theater, uh, if possible, potentially even building new somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I, I basically said I'll believe it when I see it, but uh, I, I just I don't want to get into my own opinion. So we had a little discussion about that as well towards the end of our time. Thanks, Chris. All right, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Do, do we have any other comments? So let's see, we don't have any public business. Any other thoughts, hopes, and dreams for the riverfront? Mm -hmm. All right, well then again, I will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I stood up there forever. <laughs>